Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It's Dr. Tager, and he has a lot to tell us uh, that's going to just blow your minds away. So Dr. Tager, tell them about yourself and tell them what you do. Sure. Um, well, I've got about half of my life, and my career in integrative functional medicine. I was one of the early pioneers in the whole wellness movement. And then I've spent the other half of my career in aesthetics, uh, both with laser companies and cosmeceutical companies. So it's this combination of building skin health and beauty from inside out and outside in. Right. So when you talk about inside out and outside in, can you like to expand on that so people know sure. exactly what you're talking about? Sure. I've got a new book called Feed Your Skin Right. And it, it seeks to answer the four questions that I have always been asked. What should I eat? What supplement should I take? What topical should I apply? And what procedure should I have? Now, mainly women ask me this, these questions, increasingly men, and everybody wants a simple answer. Just tell me the one thing to do, hurry up, give me yeah. a, just a few things. And I do have a very simple answer. It's, it depends. See, there's no other person on the planet with the same skin as yours. Right. No one with the same environmental factors, same genetics, the same medical history, etc. So the goal of the book was to help people find their individual path to skin radiance. And that involves this concept of personalized nutrition. I like that because nowadays you see so many advertisements and so many things that say, oh, take turmeric and your skin will glow and you'll be radiant. And it goes deeper than that. It's about exactly what we put in our mouths, how we take care of our bodies, what, you know, our individual personalized, like you said, evaluation of our bodies, what we need through those personal evaluations. And I think that's where the field has really gotten, gotten exciting. It used to be that it was sort of a one size fits all. Right. And then we realized that, that as we're learning more about the science of individuality, that some people need more of certain things than others. Yeah. So if you look at the kind of testing, first of all, you can learn a lot from just simple blood tests, mm -hmm. but to go beyond that, you want to begin to do some other assessments. These are things like nutrigenomics, mm -hmm. your genes, determine what proteins get turned on and off. But increasingly, we know that these genes also have everything to do with how we absorb, how we transport, and how we metabolize vitamins and minerals and other key factors. So if you've got a genetic variant uh, that means that you break down vitamin C more quickly, right. or you don't absorb as much, your needs go up and and that's one piece of the puzzle we also have issues with food sensitivities mm -hmm. some people because they either have an allergy a true ige reaction or an igg a delayed reaction they have issues increasingly as people age they have problems with digestion right. so we know that six percent of people at the age of 60 are not making enough hydrochloric acid. So they're not breaking down the nutrients in forms that can be absorbed. Then also we have the incredibly very rich and fertile areas of the gut and the skin microbiome. Yes. And both of those shed light on why you might need a certain probiotics or to change your diet. So all of this sort of can help inform a person yes. of the path that's right for them. Now, you know, I went to a functional medicine doctor and I did very thorough blood work on me. Now, after you get the, the blood work back, you can actually figure out what you're deficient in, what you're not deficient in, what hormones you lack, what hormones, you know, are balanced. And it, they get a good idea of the, the makeup of your, of your body. But you went into it a little further because you were talking about um, the next thing you were talking about is the personalized, what your body needs. It was the, um, 
I'm trying to think of the term that you used. It was the scientific term, um, the nutra, um, nutrigenomics. Yes. The nutri <laughs> my tongue is tied. <laughs> I'll let you say it instead of me. Yes. And that goes further deep into it because now you're going more into the genetics. You're going more into the, into the personalized area. So what does a person do? Let's say they go to a functional medicine doctor, they get their blood work. Now they want to go deeper. They really want to figure out what their body really is lacking and, and they need and what they want to personalize a look of what the, you know, yeah. what their body really needs. Let's step back a little bit. You okay. know, let's go to the 40,000 foot level first. Okay. So the first thing that any good integrative, functional, holistic oriented practitioner will do, will do a deep dive on what you eat mm -hmm. and when you eat. Okay. What does a typical day look like in your diet? Right. So, and then who are you eating with? How quickly are you eating? How much are you leaning on prepared foods? How much sugar are you taking in? Certainly we know that the average American takes in more than 100 pounds of refined yeah. sugar a year. And yeah. that causes glycation. Glycation messes up your collagen. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think that's the first place. So if you go to an integrative functional practitioner and they don't start out with your diet and they just want to sell you tests and supplements, I think you're being done a disservice. Right. So I think you have to begin with diet. And, and that's the hardest thing for people. You know, Stacey, you talk a lot about mastery. We're going to mm -hmm. master skills. Well, I don't believe that anyone actually ever totally masters diet. Definitely we do not. the best we can 90% yes. of the time. Right. And we try to make those wise choices yes. and choices yes. that will nourish our body. So you start there. Then there are any number of tests that you can run. There are a lot of tests, particularly for tests around gut health. Yes. Um, there are, there's a dozen tests that practitioners can provide most of them are not covered by insurance. Yes. So I, I think that you learn so much by the history and the physical. Another thing, for example, there's something called DNDs, drug mm -hmm. nutrient depletions. Yes. So this is very important. So if you're taking a statin for mm -hmm. cholesterol, right. as 26 million Americans are, well, you are depleting your CoQ10. Now, right. why is that important? CoQ10 is uh, critical for mitochondrial function. Yes. Um, for the energy for all the cells in our bodies. So I think that's another overlay, this, these drug nutrient depletions. So we learn things from blood tests. We learn things from saliva. Yes. We learn things from urine tests. We learn things by having our uh, genetics assessed. We're having food sensitive sensitivity testing done. We learn from getting our microbiome analyzed. And now we can even analyze our skin microbiome. And um, all of this can basically inform us to what we need more of, less of, what we should keep away from, what we need to lean into. Right. And that, that then becomes exciting. Now, the other piece of that is certainly the lifestyle piece. Yes. So nutrition, again, is just one part of, of lifestyle. It's a yes. big part. But there is also exercise, mm -hmm. there is sleep, yes. there is stress management, yes. there is gratitude, yes. there is, are the importance of social networks. So all of that plays a role in this as well. Oh, a hundred percent. And those are things that I talk about all the time. And you made a good point that I p think people don't realize is that if we do take a medication like a statin, or if we do take medication, let's say I had neurovirus and like, you know, usually it goes out of your body in three, four days. Well, it lasted and it, and it, it lasted, I had to be hospitalized for three, three days. It went through my digestive system and it, it destructed the lining of my stomach. And it took such a long time for my body to heal. And when I talk to my doctor, I'm like, you know, I read that, you know, it's supposed to only, he you know, it's just a short period of time. And then you're supposed to go back to yourself. He says, well, you take Keppra for your epilepsy. He goes, that slows down the healing process of the body. And people don't realize, but if we take a medication, those medications can, like you said, 
change your body, change, give you maybe cause a deficiency, maybe cause slowing down of the, of the healing of the body. It does things and, and people don't realize that it could change the way your body functions overall. Yeah, the, the biggest connection has to do with probably around the microbiome. So if you think about it, your brain weighs two and a half to three pounds. Well, all of the bacteria, the fungi, the viruses in your gut weigh about the same thing. So that's yeah. an organ. Mm -hmm. And that organ produces the neurotransmitters yes. that are so critical, serotonin and dopamine and, and all of those neurotransmitters. It also produces the short chain fatty acids, yes. which are sometimes called postbiotics. And these are uh, fatty acids that are critical for brain function and yes. skin health and beauty. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think the point there is that, you know, uh, we, we, we try to get people off sugar. So what have they gotten? They've gone to non-nutritive sugar sweeteners. The problem, they're still ingesting a drug and that particular chemical yeah. is affecting the microbiome. Yeah. So everything that you put in your mouth, you are feeding your bacteria. And you know what they love? They love fiber. <laughs> they, love, they love roughage. They love vegetables. They like a rich, diverse. Yes. Um, a group of colors and they, they love when you eat the rainbow because yes. they take that fiber and they make all those good short chain fatty acids that protect the gut the liver the skin um also all of that is is critical so you know I, I i've often told many people that sure you want to know about supplements i'd be glad to talk to you about it but you know what I can't out supplement your crappy diet. Exactly. So you're going to have a crappy diet and think that, well, I'll just start taking supplements. It, it just it's doesn't gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you made a good point. People don't realize how important it is to actually, you know, have a healthy diet. And you even mentioned stress. Well, 70% of illness is caused by stress. You know, you need at least 15 minutes of exercise, depending on your age and, and you know, your physical condition. You have to have some type of movement, movement, and move that, you know, so your circulation or your blood keeps flowing and, and other things don't happen. But I don't want to get off this subject because you wrote a book about beauty and, and about skin. And, and I want to get into that. But, you know, I think it's a good point that you made that, we really have to stop and think because many people, when they want to lose weight, I say, well, what's your diet? You know, and they have the crappiest diet in the world, but they don't understand why they're not losing weight, you know, and you know, if our body doesn't recognize the foods or recognizes these, you know, ingredients, you know, these artificial ingredients, it stores it. And over time, we just build up toxins, don't we? I agree. If yeah, I, absolutely. You know, a lot of times uh, those there are toxins, there are chemical toxins that get stored in fat, by the way. Yes. And when people actually start trying to lose a lot of weight, some of those impurities, toxins that are fat soluble get, get put back into the body. But I want to raise the point you mentioned, uh, talked a little bit about exercise. You've got 60,000 miles of blood vessels going <laughs> through your body to feed 37 trillion cells. And at any point in time, five, six, seven percent of the blood flow is going through your skin. Right. Now, one of the things that we sort of forget about, um, and that really is the, the root cause of so much disease, it has to do with what takes place in the linings of the blood vessels. Okay. So that's where we talk about cholesterol, oxidized cholesterol uh, causing problems. But if we shift that focus a little bit and think about endothelial health, endothelial cells are the linings of these little blood vessels. And then we're starting to think about the role of oxygen and the role of things like nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. Now, people who eat beets and my favorite green, which is arugula, yeah. they're getting a lot of nitrates in right. their body. And what happens, you take these nitrates in, they are converted by the bacteria in your mouth into nitric oxide. Right. Nitric oxide dilates the blood vessels, so you get more blood flow. It's important for endothelial health, and it's important for ATP production. So um, that process, and by the way, there are there's some good data looking on the fact, looking at the fact that 
mouthwash kills those good bacteria that you want to convert the organic nitrates into nitric oxide. Wow. So, uh, which is a very interesting piece of data. Yeah. So oral health, you know, uh, and, and in fact, the mouth is one of the first places where we look for vitamin uh, and uh, mineral deficiencies. You will see issues with the tongue and, and, and the linings of the mouth um, to indicate that there's a mineral deficiency well before you'll find that on a blood test. So that's another piece of the equation, which is a good nutritional history and physical. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, I didn't realize that mouthwash, you know, can actually do that. I, I didn't know that piece of data. So that was very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, the person, there's a, a doctor, Dr. Nathan Bryan, who's Actually, I envy him because he spent his entire life looking at nitric oxide. He's the world's expert. And he did uh, that study uh, down in Texas a few years back. Wow. So you were talking about beauty and how we eat and how we take care of our bodies and what we put in our bodies, you know, and, you know, men want to always look young. They go through their midlife crisis just as women. But I'm like you were saying, you get a lot more questions from women, probably because they're not embarrassed to ask them. But, you know, <laughs> but both men and women do want to try to stay as youthful as possible and, and hold on to that, you know, that, that youthfulness that, you know, um, that's, you know, we, tr we, we sent to age and before we know it, you know, life, you know, it just goes so quickly, but, you know, while we're in the moment, we want to look our best and feel our best. And even at 90, I, I have a grandmother that acts like she's 60. So, you know, I'm hoping I'll, I'll be like that when she's like that, you know, <laughs> but to, you sure. know, to, to have that youthful skin and to have that radiance and that glow, you talk about that in your book, don't you? You talk about yeah, it. Yeah, the, the book, my book, I'm sure you, it's uh, yeah, Feed Your Skin Right. That's, uh, you know, grab it on Amazon. But, you know, it's, again, answering those four questions. There's the food that you eat, supplements you take, and then you open up this entire wor world of supplements. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's estimated, pick a number, um, but you know, the average woman may be spending fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a year on 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 topicals. Oh you, yeah. I mean, if I go into my wife's side of the uh, uh, of, of the bathroom and I open mm -hmm. up, I, I, there's supplements everywhere in various stages of use or disuse, and I've got my cache of them as well. I've tried yeah. to, tried that. So I I think what we have to realize is that most of the ingredients that are in topicals usually don't penetrate the skin. They right. moisturize, they hydrate, but there are some that get and find their way down into the dermis okay. uh, where they are active. But, um, you know, there are categories and, and one of the things, I mean, certainly you need to wear a sunblock. If your skin tolerates it, you need a retinoid uh, mm. to enhance that skin turnover. But then there are all these bioactive molecules that that are in the category of antioxidants vitamin c being the the prototypical molecule it's very small penetrates the skin it has some powerful antioxidant abilities but then there's others the b vitamins you'll yeah. see niacinamide for example mm -hmm. particularly in, in, in formulas that, that soothe the skin uh, but then there are new there are peptides there are yeah. growth factors there are now exosomes, which are these little, very small um, signaling molecules that, that carry messages uh, for the skin. And you'll see those, and they come from all sorts of things, from fibroblasts, from umbilical cord stem cells, from other mesenchymal stem cells. So there are those, and they can penetrate the skin. So, And then the exciting thing is that we're starting to see complementary treatment in which I think there's three pieces. One is get your diet together and take the right supplements. Two, get the right topicals. And three, pair that with the right procedures. Right. And, and procedures that biostimulate, that can get down, get either some heat uh, into the dermis or, or disturb it to build skin health and beauty from inside out. Because I know for skin products, there are people who pay, 
you know, you could, you can get a little tube in one of, in, in some of these stores for like $200, you know, it's just like a little tube and people are willing to pay it to keep on to, you know, to hold on to that youthfulness, you know? Yeah. There's the promise, you know, the, the hype. I mean, there are 85, 90, a hundred thousand products, you yeah. know, for healthcare and beauty. It's $160 billion industry. Yes. And it, it's very confusing. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, it is product that is well packaged, that is, they, they get influencers and testimonials, but I, you know, I, again, in the book, I, what I try to do is separate out the science. Yeah. So, and, and what I did actually, I, I, I'm a family doc by background, I've been involved mm -hmm. in things, but I asked my favorite seven dermatologists, uh, what do they think is worth money? And so in the book, I actually lean on their recommendations quite heavily for, you know, what really works I mean, what's worth the money. Right. Uh, because, you know, you will pay more money for the professional products. Uh, they often have more clinical data behind them. Yeah. They are formulated more elegantly. Uh, they have more uh, knowledge and expertise behind them. Uh, so you know, I, I tend to lean on those products because I understand the science, but then also there's, there are great quote unquote natural products in which you've got all sorts of herbs and um, other vitamins and minerals that are great for the skin. So I think there, this is sort of how the field breaks out. Do you want to go this to, towards the side of science and what's new and hot and this great new hot molecule or do you want to go uh, towards herbs and uh, rosemary and lavender and thyme and et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Right. So it, it, and then there's combinations. I mean, you can take some products that, that have both. Right. You'll have, they'll have green tea extract and resveratrol in with, with their peptides. So um, this, and, and it really, I'd love to tell you that there's a formula that you could just plug in, but in truth, it is a lot more trial and error on the topical side of things. Yeah. With nutraceuticals yeah. and diet, we've got a lot more we can sort of assess and to personalize treatment. You, you move more into, let me try it, let me see how it works. And, and, and that, so it's a little bit more subjective for many folks. And then it has, you have to like the way it feels and it smells. And yeah. I was recently sent me a, a product with a, a powerful antioxidant mm -hmm. that is supposed to be, I mean, that I know is great from the literature, right? but it smells like sulfur. And I, you know, there's just no way that, you know, that my wife's going to put this on, or I'm going to put this on at night before I go to bed. Yeah. I'd have to, you know, we'd be sleeping in separate <laughs> rooms. <laughs> And there are times so, that kind of make your face kind of greasy or your skin feel greasy too. Or sticky, sticky, sticky. the stickiness, you know, where you, it, it just won't. So I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of preference involved in terms of the artistry of a formulation and what people like the smells of. I mean, I put, use certain topicals because I love the way they smell. I mean, I will use a light daytime uh, for the moisturizer because oh, I, I like the way that smells. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you use a heavier, thicker one at night. Sure. Now there are people, um, that haven't gone to the doctor yet. They want to stay youthful and, you know, they probably are not eating the best they possibly could. Now without evaluating them, are there some foods that you recommend that people maybe start focusing on for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you know, and maybe things that they should probably nix out of their diet if they want to start feeling good and having that radiance and having that good youthful skin and not so not wrink becoming so wrinkly and dry at such a young age, you know, besides genetics. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I devoted a big chapter to each of those foods that you want to really minimize and foods you want to lean into. Yeah. And this has everything to do with these daily choices we make many, 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 many times a day. Yeah. Uh, how are we going to fuel our body? You know, if I had to think a little bit about 
what is the overarching principle? You want to eat stuff that looks like it came in its original form. Yeah. Uh, it's not been processed. It's not been chopped up. It's not been packaged. It's not been laden with chemicals and preservatives and artificial colorings and packaged, and it will stay safe on a shelf for right. the next three millennia. Yeah. So you want to try to get as, it, it, as close as possible to looking like real food. I mean, that's yeah. probably the, the biggest overarching things. I think that, you know, the, certainly the things that you want to minimize the three or four big ones are sugar, 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 and sugar because of glycation and, and very, you know, I will often talk to someone and I'll note that their hemoglobin A1C is up, which is a measurement of diabetes or prediabetes yeah. in which the sugar attaches to the heme molecule and changes the function of the hemoglobin. Right. And the same person who you'll speak to it and say, you know, if you continue down this road, you're going to have diabetes. And they, they say, okay, thanks, doc. And then you say, if you do this, I mean, if you continue this way, you will glycate your collagen and you will wrinkle and age faster. Oh, I'll, well, maybe I'll think about that. <laughs> so, you know, there is a, <laughs> well, as an integrative, you know, integrative practitioners, we all want to do the same thing. We've got this big room, it's called wellness. And we want to invite people in the door and they may come in through an illness like epilepsy, or they may come in yeah. through an accident or in through a cardiovascular problem. But there is a big door and it's called beauty. And, and so many people will want to come in through that door. Yeah. So for them, avoid the glycation. Another thing that's really important is the ratio of omega three sixes to threes. Now, <clears throat> before World War Two, mm -hmm. the ratio of the good quote unquote good because it's a little bit um, they do have the bad omegas, the O sixes are yeah. also good too. But it's the ratio. Omega six are found in these refined corn oils and safflower oils and all of the refined oils. And the good omega threes we find in fish oils. Uh, in this is where we have the essential fatty, the good essential fatty acids. Well, before World War II, that ratio was about three to four to one. Now it's very common to have people have 18, 20, 25 to one, yeah. bad versus good. Now, what's the problem with that? If you have an imbalance, you push the metabolic pathway to create more inflammatory molecules. These are called prostaglandins, mm -hmm. big word, but the point is this is, these two things, the sugar and the imbalance of omega-6 and 3, start pushing things in the direction of an inflammatory diet and okay. inflammation in the body. And I think you can add meat to that. For some people who, are, uh, who have issues with dairy, dairy might be an issue as well. Certainly we see some of that, by the way, in acne. The three things that we know about for sure yeah. uh, for acne, sugar, dairy, high fat foods. And those high fat foods, why are they bad? Because they've got so much omega-6. So those are the big things. You wanna keep away from things that are packaged and processed and chemicals and artificial. So this moves you over into what do you eat? And here <laughs> it comes back down to, it depends. Uh, you know, you want to get in the habits of having a plant-centric diet. That's what I call it. Yes. Lots of vegetables in every meal. You sneak them in. You yeah. sneak in salad uh, mm -hmm. with your breakfast. You lean on fermented foods. You throw sauerkraut, the kind that's in the refrigerated section of the supermarket, not in the, the cans with the preservatives, the jars and the preservatives. You throw sauerkraut and pickled f things into foods. Yeah. Uh, you throw it in your salad. You slide in as many vegetables as you can. You get in the habit of just adding that, looking for that, enjoying that. You lean on olive oil. Olive oil is, is just great. And it's great for the skin. Now we need these essential fatty acids and we need also in something else called ceramides, 
mm -hmm. um, which are sort of like the glue that hold together the skin cells. So just as we have a leaky gut, right. sometimes we have leaky skin. And you'll see that, I mean, estheticians will have people come in and they'll say, well, you've got an issue with your skin barrier. We need to protect your barrier. And they'll use ceramides from the outside, but also equally important are the ceramides, which are found in grains, uh, there are supplements that, that have both rice or peach derived ceramides in them and the essential fatty acids. So now you're building that skin health and beauty, that barrier function two yeah. different ways. So you want to, that you want to go for the low fat protein sources. Uh, I have a personal rant. Can I do my, my rant? Of course. So I don't know who conned us into throwing out the egg yellows for all those years, cholesterol, we're fighting cholesterol. But when you threw out the egg yellow, you threw, yeah, a little dietary cholesterol, which is not a problem because it's your body manufacturing cholesterol. Yeah. That's the real issue. What you threw away were all the B vitamins and choline. Okay. Choline. And this, this is epileptic kinds of connotations. Mm -hmm. The choline is, an, is a wonderful essential fat that is wraps around the, the nerve sheaths and is a critical fat for your brain to work as well also. Really? So we know that 92% of Americans, according to the government surveys, don't, don't even get the average amount, average, uh, the estimated average requirement for choline in their diet. So we, why we've probably been thrown away on too many egg yellows. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that's one of my personal rants. So I'm a big fan of eggs. Uh, you want to try to get them from happy chickens, right? Chickens that have run around and made these nice, rich orange y yolks, yeah. um, fish, certainly fatty fish when you can get it. Uh, the problem we have these days, and it's a financial issue as well, is that we have so many farm raised fish that are fed corn, basically. Yeah. That that changes their essential, uh, that changes their fats. Yeah. So they're making more omega sixes and not as much omega threes. And we see that in beef. So, but then this becomes a, a, a cost issue because obviously you, you want to get the best, you know, uh, wild raised salmon. Uh, you want to get uh, grass fed beef if you're going to eat beef you mm -hmm. want happy chickens it, it just costs more and that that is an issue for folks today so yeah. uh, i have to be with be sensitive to that as well but um certainly more protein sources beans grains uh combining them certainly critical i have to say i went back and forth when it came to eggs because i read so much different data it was so conflicting and so confusing and then when i went to get my blood levels for my cholesterol my cholesterol was high so i just assumed i'm just eating too many eggs because i would have eggs in the morning and it was you know because they would say oh one person would say eggs you know higher your cholesterol the yolk you know and then other people would say but there's all the nutrition is in the yolk you know, so that so I would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, worried about my cholesterol. And, you know, I ended up going with the egg whites because I was so worried about lowering my cholesterol that and and, and, the, and the data out there was so conflicting. One person would say one thing, another person would say another thing. And it was just very confusing. This is all, this is all part of what we were fed um, from some nutrition experts yeah about fat 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 cholesterol 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 and there is you know when the emphasis should have been put more on sugar let's mm -hmm. put it that way and there's only 300 milligrams of cholesterol in an egg okay that's not the problem the problem is not dietary cholesterol the problem is the uns the the saturated fats that okay. your body then uses to make many, 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 many more times that amount of cholesterol. It is your body's manufacturing cholesterol. That's the issue. So I, and if you were to cut out eggs as a source for many people's diets, 
I think you would see more deficiency than you see, particularly older adults oh, to, really? who also depend a lot on eggs for as their protein source because it's affordable. It's it's good. So I'm uh, I'm basically very supportive of of eggs. Uh, I personally have no issues with with dairy or I don't. So dairy you have two things: you either have a lactose issue, right? Or you have a, a true allergy to the to the protein, and um, you know you if you have lactose, you can still have some of the hard cheeses, but you can also take lactase. And right. There's so many products these days, um, and then the other question has to do with full fat dairy milk products versus the the skimmed, and I think there is data that informs us that says, you know, you may be better off with the full fat uh, than some of the skimmed products. So, right. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, and, and nuts, seeds and nuts, getting in the habit of unroasted, unsalted, turning yeah. to, to seeds and nuts. Yes, they are a rich caloric source. But, you know, you can just take something like I, I try to eat uh, three Brazil nuts a day. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are so rich in selenium. Yes. Why is selenium? It, selenium is critical for skin health. Now, most yes. people in the United States don't have deficiencies with selenium. But one of the other issues we have whenever we measure anything, we have this bell-shaped curve, you know, where we're, we're kind of in the middle. And it doesn't take into account the, these nutrient analysis and these recommendations. Don't take into account individual health status, whether you've got chronic diseases, whether you're taking medications, whether you have genetic issues, um, the stresses in your life, etc. So I, I like to think that, you know, rather than focus on um, deficiencies, we kind of look at adequacies and sufficiencies. Right. So in other words, I, I don't advocate mega doses of vitamins. Mm -hmm. I don't think Hardly anybody needs that. There are things called upper upper limits, tolerable upper limits, uh, that for the most part, you, you can, you know, I would work with a practitioner if you're going to go beyond that. Right. Uh, but, but I don't think anybody really needs that. Now, having said that, I know I get a lot of questions about IV nutrition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, for the most part, eat right take some oral supplements, but there are folks that also have issues, really significant issues with digestion and absorption. Yeah. Or who have chronic diseases uh, that, that significantly impacted their health. Or they go to Vegas and they go on a bender and, you know, may, maybe maybe that infused that hydration yeah. is good and, and, and uh, throw in a little glutathione for detox and uh, some vitamin C and B vitamins. But but I, I think there's a place for that. But you know, if you if you drew a pie and said, where are you going to focus? Healthy diet, eighty percent. Supplements, 10, 15 percent. Maybe IVs are in there, five percent, right. as as an occasional kind of thing to do. Unless, of course, you've got a real chronic condition. Right. I I find that so many people in our age group suffer from inflammation bloatedness or you know those are like two factors i hear from everybody they all everyone i know not everyone i can't say everyone but a good majority of the people i know always complain about inflammation yeah well <laughs> you know it was i think it was 74 when uh, time magazine put inflammation as on their cover and <laughs> it really, uh, changed the way we think about uh, about all conditions yeah being inflammatory conditions and we look at the inflammatory markers, mm -hmm. uh, the cytokines and the interleukins yes. and that are going up. In fact, when, one of the, the real ways that we're doing having biologics to treat diseases is we've identified these, these inflammatory cytokines, small proteins yes. in the body, and we're able to create medicines that bring them down. Well, that's the pharmacological route. Right. But we also, there are other ways that we can bring down inflammation in the body that we don't think about. One of them certainly has to do with the microbiome mm -hmm. and it's and how it works. 
there's also the concept of um, the, the, how the endocannabinoid system works, which are um, these receptors that bring down mm -hmm. inflammation. Probably the third and the most interesting thing for me has been work I've been doing with the vagus nerve, mm -hmm. which uh, along with a colleague, we started a, a 501c3 called the Vagus Nerve Society. And what we're realizing is that inflammation the signals that come from the gut, you're talking about bloating, for example. Yeah. Those yeah. signals go from the gut, well, and they could be lots of reasons. There could be enzyme issues. There could be stress that's affecting the the motility of the gut. Right. There could be a microbiome changes. There's, so there's a lot of reasons for that. But all of those signals go up for the afferent, we call the afferent pathway to the brain, and it, it registers in the brain. The brain says, well, let's see what we can do to dampen that inflammation. It sends signals via the efferent, the outbound part of the vagus nerve, down to the spleen to reduce the inflammatory markers, to the gut to sort of help restore the normal homeostasis in the gut, the normal motility in the gut. Yeah. And, yeah. and there are ways that we can stimulate the vagus nerve. There is a device, a non-invasive vagus nerve stimulator called True Vega, T R U V A G A. It's four minutes twice a day. It's very powerful because it impacts. It just gently stimulates very safely uh, the vagus nerve where it connects up in the neck. Uh, that's the super highway, and it can help create the rest and relaxation uh phenomenon that goes that's that is mediated by the parasympathetic nervous system the autonomic nervous system you know we there's a lot of people who are doing yeah. hacks for the vagus nerve you yeah. know throw your face in cold water massage your carotid uh breathe certainly breathing does that yeah. also but this is a very powerful way of stimulating both the efferent and afferent uh wings of the vagus nerve so that's something to look into as well for folks and it's i've often advocated um, that people need that they need to get learn to get a little bit of a control over the workings of their autonomic nervous system mm -hmm. you need to be able to tap into the ability to pause yeah to reset right now you know, all of us have had that situation where we fly off the handle and we write that text or that hot response or that leave somebody a message and we say, ah, why did you do that? <laughs> and, and if only, you know, I had paused, had that little pause, that little reset. Right. Now, you know, obviously deep breathing is the best way to do that. And uh, because that sets the auto, the parasympathetic nervous system. But, but there is that level of mastery. I think that, you know, that's what yoga teaches us. That's yeah. what Tai Chi teaches us. That's what meditation teaches, is the ability to sort of be one with your breath, to let thoughts come in and go out. But it's whatever you need to do to create for yourself that sense of deep peace, that sense of, of safety in your nervous system, so many people are wired and tired. We yeah. certainly see this around, uh, the, we see it frantically is in the perimenopausal era, period. Yeah. Where 60% of women are not sleeping six hours a night. Right. And they're wired and they're tired. And uh, so we've got to be able to think about nourishing the body in two ways. And I, I, I think a lot about this, that we are, all electrochemical beings. Mm -hmm. We focused really on the chemical part of things, on these inflammatory cytokines and the herbs and the medicines. But what we haven't focused as much on are it's the electrical side of things. And I think this is where this concept of vagus nerve stimulation, this true vega product can be really, really helpful for folks. Uh, uh, it's a good habit to get into. Because there are times that you're not going to be able to uh, start singing, start gargling, put your face in cold water when you're at work. Yeah. But, but uh, you you can do a, a deep physiological reset 
of your parasympathetic nervous system. And we talk a lot that is the concept of parasympathetic tone. You know, in the body, the body is always amping up and turning down at the same time. Yes. You've got things that ramp up and things that tone down. And that's exactly what the autonomic nervous system does. Ramping things up, turning things down. Do you think that sometimes causes pain? Like people experience pain. It could also, a lot of it can stem from your your nervous system, from your stress, from from just life being overbearing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think you've you've really hit on something there that is has to do with the perception of pain. You know, uh, pain is when you cut your finger or you. The pain is not there, the pain is here. Yes. Pain is the function of nervous impulses going to the brain, being interpreted, and then what happens, what gets set off in the body chemically and electrically to dampen that pain. Right. And that all has to do with the perception. So we know that there are devices that, um, that are very powerful. Uh, uh, vagus nerve stimulators are powerful for migraines and cluster yeah. headaches. Uh, you know that with epilepsy, you can wrap a, an electrode around the, the vagus nerve and it yeah. pulses periodically and it interrupts those signals. So I, I do encourage people to think of themselves as electrochemical beings. Now, I'll leave you with this. This is really kind of one of my fun. So you can, if you take two people and you put them within six feet of each other, yeah. something yeah. takes place called coherence. Mm -hmm. and this is really at the heart of the patient, physician, cli client, uh, patient, client, uh, blah, 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 <laughs> practitioner, <laughs> client relationship. But you can detect the radiation coming from the heart with sophisticated electromagnetometers. Yes three feet from the body. Now in the skull, we've got to get really close, but we can be out three feet. So think about that. When you are next to your dog, your cat, uh, your favorite significant other, your favorite person, your the doctor that you like, right. and you are within six feet, the there is an interface there of the magnetic, electromagnetic rays coming from your heart and that is what you know is creates something called coherence and that is in fact the nature of the powerful bond that we have with proximity and when you think about it of what's been lost during COVID right. that is other than my dog who got a chance to say wait a minute you're not traveling 150,000 miles a year you're gonna be home with me every day and we're gonna just hang out uh but you know the person the person piece got got disassociated yeah we've lost some of that that social connection that is in fact rooted in electrophysiological connection so that that's the loss and so you know, uh, once we get past this fear of germs, and we just got to go out and hug people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just, there's that sense of touch, which is so critical for, for well-being. And I, I just, you know, I, I do think that there are people who go to practitioners once a week just to be touched. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think to revitalize that sense of touch. So, um Reach out if appropriate, by the way. <laughs> if appropriate, you're not at work. It's, it's a non, non-sexual. Reach out and hug someone you love. Right. Yes, so, I agree. I think that's I don't want to get life. in trouble on that one. <laughs> <sighs> Could someone, if they were interested in a Vegas um, nerve stimulator, can they? Can yeah. They they can purchase yeah. it? Yeah, they go to True Vega, T-R-U-V-A-G-A. -A. It's a powerful device and it's uh it's it's great self-care safe the technology behind it has been used in millions and millions of stimulations it doesn't affect uh, heart uh, at all because it, it it just affects uh the how you sleep how you focus how you concentrate 
your ability to calm your nervous system, that's what it does. It's a great, great wellness device. That's great. I, I know a lot of people actually, like when you mentioned epilepsy, a lot of people use it and a lot of people have had success with their seizures. A lot of people have become controlled using the, the vagus nerve simulator. Yeah, yeah. there are vagus nerve stimulators. Uh, there are, so there's implantable ones. Yes. And there are ones that are, are quote unquote transdermal, go through mm -hmm. the skin. The ones in the ears uh, get a little bit of the fibers. Yeah. The ones that, that work on the neck, really hit the super highway and and many more of the fibers and to my way of thinking are are more powerful and more right fun. that's wonderful that's great now if you had to give a couple of tips before we go to people about you know helping them you know stay young feel youthful you know keep that longevity going and you know trying to stay feel the best they can feel what type of tips would you would you you know give people if you had to give them a couple of tips before we go you know, when you think about beautiful people, um, they, they don't just have a lot of work done. They sort of glow from the inside out. Right. And, and I think the focus, particularly these days, and as we have such divided societies, is really working on being a good, caring, compassionate human being. Yeah. I think that's probably the first thing. Uh, beyond that is, hey, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of yourself, and I say this to healthcare practitioners all the time. Yeah. If you don't care for yourself, you have very little to give to others. Right. And this applies to that working parent. This applies to anyone who's in a position of interacting with others. So be gentle on yourself. Be good right. for yourself. Make wise choices in nutrition, 90% of the time. Doesn't mean you can't participate in that birthday cake, you know, uh, but it's it's a 90-10 thing, I think. 90% yeah. of the time, you're really doing good. The other thing that I have advocated for years is that people catch themselves sooner. Right. You know, we all have, you know, we're, people are rhythmic characters. We get into these rhythms. Yes. And, yes. you know, the downside of the rhythm is called a funk. OK, yeah. you know, you're in this funky period where you're overeating and you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're not exercising and you're drinking too much. We all get that. Yes. Catch yourself sooner. Right. Instead of hanging out in that space for a week, <laughs> cut it to five days, to three days, to, right. a day, to an afternoon. Yeah. And then, you know, and we call it you know, when my family always got it. Get it back on the program. Back on the program. <laughs> <laughs> Catch yourself sooner. Right. So that that's my thought on that. Anyway, if you do all that, um, you know, you'll have this inner vitality. Uh, stay young, stay flexible in body and mind. Now, before we go, I want you to show everybody your book again and just tell them the title so they have it in their head okay. and tell them where they can get it also. Yeah, this is uh, Amazon is where you get it. Uh, feed your skin right. And the most important word in this, by the way, is the word right. Because as I mentioned, what's right for you is different from what's right for someone else. So exactly. if you grab it on Amazon, I encourage you to go to True Vega. I, by the way, I mention a ton of products in the book. I go out and give you my recommendations for supplements, for topicals, for procedures. Uh, it, we could be spending the next week going over all that, Stace. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've got those recommendations in the book as far as also, you know, some ideas now you find good practitioners as well. That's great. And tell everybody about your website because you do have a wonderful website. Oh, I've got two of them. Uh, okay. My personal one is drtager.com. And it tells my, my story beginning in the 70s uh, with this thing called wellness. And uh, then I've got changewell.com for more of the professionals who want to do training. And you know, I'm on Instagram at, uh, at drmtager. And professionals, I encourage to hit me up on LinkedIn, and I'm pretty responsive there as well. So, um, yep. And for professionals, we do have a professional training course coming out in about three weeks called Inside Skin Beauty. And it's a 10-hour course on everything that's the book but for professionals and 
you know, that's, uh, that'll be out as well. Excellent. Excellent. You know, Dr. Tager, it's been a, a wonderful experience. Thank you so much. You've provided us with a wealth of information. I appreciate everything. I'd love to have you back on the show. Maybe we could talk some more about, you know, different things that we haven't covered, my pleasure. but it was a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. You have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.